मैं तो दिल्ली दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, alleged $400,000 scam lands eight in court. COVID-19 fight goes up a notch, and demand for rental properties on a decline. From the studios of FBC Super, Jackie Spade. Former Nasinu Town Council employees and executives from crime companies appeared in the Nasinu Magistrates Court today. They're alleged to have defrauded the town council over $400,000. The eight people charged appeared in four separate cases, and it's alleged that their corrupt activities took place over the span of five years. Pranita Prakash with the details. Former Information Technology Officer with the Nasinu Town Council, Polya Simbeni Valu, is charged with conspiracy to defraud, bribery, general dishonesty, and destroying evidence. It's alleged he was behind the purchase based on false quotations and purchase orders from various companies. He's believed to have solicited more than $116,000 and accepted over $57,000 in bribes from 2014 to 2019. A second former IT officer with the Nasinu Town Council, Eli Kim Bula, is charged with one count of bribery for allegedly soliciting $1,000 from an employee of the Innovation Technology Company. Meanwhile, the director of Innovation Technology Private Limited, Razia Bibi, faces a count of aiding and abetting bribery. Another company employee also faces similar charges. In a second case, director of AK Investment Diwakar Lal is charged with conspiracy to defraud, bribery and causing a loss from June to September 2018. In the third case, director of Print Zone Vicky Kumar is charged with conspiracy to defraud, bribery and causing a loss amounting to $37,029 to the Nasinu Town Council. He is alleged to have offered Benivalu $7,400 as a bribe while trying to obtain a gain. In the fourth case, manager of business equipment limited, Rimal Chand and director Ranjini Chand are charged with two counts of bribery. It's alleged the total of $2,661 was exchanged between the two and Benifalu. The actions of all the accused are alleged to have caused a total loss of over $407,000 to the Nasinu Town Council. The eight have been released on $5,000 bail bond each. The matter is adjourned to the 23rd of June. Pranita Prakash. FBC News. Screening for COVID-19 has kicked it up a notch with two types of tests now available for the Fijian public. Health Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangainambete says the enhanced capabilities of Fiji Center for Disease Control now mean that they can ascertain whether a person is COVID-19 within an hour. Previous tests took close to six hours before results could be confirmed. Maggie Boyle tells us more. Fiji's overall response in the fight against coronavirus has grown from strength to strength. Uh, you know, so far we've had uh, the 15 that have recovered and uh, the three active cases. Uh, I think we're also grateful also that, uh, you know, it's been 18 cases and nothing more since then. With the whole of government approach, the Ministry of Health has taken the strategic lead. Uh, you know, certainly we've gone from, you know, starting off at about 15, uh, less than 20. Now we are doing up to capability up to 70 tests a day. Uh, depending on the swaps that are able to be taken and brought forward. Uh, but we have the capability because of the investment that's been put in place and the fact that we have two mechanisms of testing, both the gene expert and the RT-PCR. While Fiji is on the cusp of being declared COVID-19 free, the health minister maintains that Fijians need to remain vigilant. In uh, terms of breaking uh, transmission of uh, COVID-19, one of the challenges that uh, remains with COVID-19, uh, as we all understand, it's an infectious diseases and um, the social distancing measures that have been put in place is no different from what's happening in other countries around the world. It has now been more than a month since Fiji's 18th coronavirus case was confirmed. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Residents of Nangando and Nandi were directed by the Ministry of Health last week to clean up their village. This follows six confirmed cases of leptospirosis, dengue and typhoid from the village that have been recorded by the Namaka Health Center. Philippe Nicasso has more. In an effort to counter the growing cases of dengue fever, leptospirosis and typhoid, villagers of Nangando have been cleaning up since last week 
which will continue for the next 14 days. We have been stressing to the villagers on the importance of making sure their compounds and surroundings are cleaned. The fight to combat this is totally in our hands. A health committee has also been set up to ensure that villagers adhere to the directive from the health officials. Last Monday we just had our village inspection with the health uh, team. We have representatives from the Ministry of Health and um, even from the um, RFMF. A nationwide cleanup campaign is also underway in response to the communicable diseases as well as to counter dengue fever and typhoid infections which has been affecting Fijians. There's been extensive work done right throughout the countries. The commissioners have actually been uh, t taking this upon themselves to work with us in the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders. We have the RFMF out in uh, numbers. And the other thing is that they've been working right throughout, even on the weekends. Leptospirosis, dengue fever and typhoid are climate-sensitive diseases with cases spiking during the wet weather and after TC Herald. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. The demand for rental properties, particularly in the Western Division, has dwindled, resulting in an increase in listings. Real estate agents say this is related directly to the halt of tourism in the country, with workers losing their jobs and some going on extended leave. Kritika Kumar has more. The real estate dealers say many rental properties are now vacant due to the tight budget of Fijians. Some are able to survive by pulling resources together. Others are just leaving and going and staying with uh, their parents. Uh, some are even going back to uh, villages uh, to fend for themselves. So all in all, there's an increase in number of listings uh, because of the, uh, the job losses. Khan says while agent activities have increased, the market has slowed down due to the pandemic. He adds that agents have repositioned how they do business because of the economic crisis. For example, people are downgrading. They lived in a property which was 1,000. They want to go to something which is about 800. So, yeah, you have to work harder. The Real Estate Agents Licensing Board believes it will take more than six months for the sector to recover. So there will be a big impact on the activities of the real estate agents in terms of their income that they'll drive from real estate dealings. Uh, but ho ho is ho we hope that generally this will pick up uh, maybe after six months or so. The rail be adding with uncertainty in the market due to the deadly virus, Fijians are hesitant to deal with properties. This is coupled with loan repayments and interest rates charged by the banks. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Up ahead, cruelty to animals continues to grow. And Gawea residents come together for a good cause. Hola, nadang gua proslan kerse, gua erkeraki. The televisi on baru on radio Fijian, nado mibit. Radio Fijian, nado mibit. Increasing concerns have been raised with the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals regarding the mistreatment of animals by owners and people in general. The SPCA says they receive at least three reports daily on matters related to animal cruelty and record 15 calls a week from concerned Fijians. Vinny Narakautonga has more. Abandoning animals or pets is on the up in the country, causing an outcry from the animal caregivers. One of the worst things we see here at the SPCA on a daily basis is we get boxes and boxes of um, babies, of little puppies, of little kittens being brought in. Some of those boxes will contain nine to ten puppies or kittens and they're from people saying they found the animals on the road in a box and they've brought them in for safekeeping here at SPCA. SPCA has reiterated that cruelty to animals is punishable under the Crimes Decree of Fiji. The SPCA co-chair says they have been conducting awareness programs around the country on good animal care. Explaining to people that there are laws that govern good behavior with animals. The laws are not always enforceable because people often don't report things properly, but we try to do, do that kind of awareness. 
Veterinarian Dr. Joe Alva says people lack knowledge in looking after their animals and there is a need for more work. People aren't looking after their dogs the way they should, right? You need to look after your dogs. Like uh, Ms. Deo said, you have to look after your dogs. They're important to us. They're good companions. They're guard dogs. They're watch dogs. All of those things, but we owe them to look after them properly. As the number of stray dog increases every day, SPCA is calling on people to bring in their pets to be neutered in their facility. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. There has been a slight delay in the official launching of the Ministry of Education's channel on the Walesi platform. FBC News understands there have been production delays in relation to some programs being aired on the channel. Minister for Education Rosie Akbar says prior to the extended holidays, parents would have wanted students to spend less time watching TV. But the tables have turned now. Akbar says the channel is here to stay. Of course, it's, it's a new educational channel which will support uh, home-based learning for our children during this uh, COVID-19 closure. But we do intend to keep the channel open uh, for the Ministry of Education under the Wallace platform. The educational channel has already begun airing educational programs and an official launch of the channel is expected later this month. Hundreds of Fijians living in Gawea settlement Lamy have banded together to repair their bridge work which is long overdue. The settlement is one of the oldest in the country and the bridge was built in the 1960s and has only been upgraded twice. Up in Isawangarindova reports, the wooden structure is rotting and poses a threat to hundreds of Fijians since it's the only way in and out of Gawea during the rainy season. The Gawea Bridge has withstood many storms, but recent floods have forced this community to take action. Uh, we are so, so concerned uh, for the life of our children, going to school, attending school, and uh, also the elders in uh, this place. This is only access, like I said, this is only access that we have during those times, and uh, we are facing a lot of difficulties uh, when it floods in this area. Kalo says former residents now residing overseas are funding the project while the youth of the community have agreed to do the hard work. From funds are sent from our relatives in overseas, and that is what we are using at the moment to buy all these materials and uh, to cater for, 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 the, for people working uh, here in the, at these bridge. There are more than 350 families in this settlement, most of them born here, and this bridge has somehow united them. This is the first time that something like this has been done. Um, doing it as a community and um, it's, uh, it feels good and I'm proud to be a member of this community because it has brought, this bridge has actually brought together a community that doesn't involve uh, working together. The community also confirmed the government is providing some technical support. The construction of the bridge has allowed brainstorming for other developments planned for the future. Apinisa Wangarindovu, FBC News. The decline in biological resources is of concern to the Agriculture Ministry. While officiating at the Biodiversity Symposium, Agriculture Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy said the increasing population is a contributing factor that needs to be addressed. St. Annie Boiler reports. The continuous developments to meet the growing demands of the current population has resulted in a huge decline in natural resources, which is a current concern. In this simplicity, harvesting our natural resources without any concern for sustainability. We are treating our natural habitat as waste dump sites, and we are putting, pulling land under biological resources for industrial and commercial activity. Dr. Reddy says it is also crucial for us to alter the way we treat our natural resources, especially in agriculture and aquaculture, to help address this concern. Champions of biodiversity. We need leaders who will not only advance the protection, expansion and branding of our biological resources, but also bring in others into the net to be champions of biodiversity. Ministry Permanent Secretary Joshua Whiteleaf says it's crucial to map out plans to preserve biodiversity. Uh, biodiversity and innovation uh, is something that goes hand in hand. If you don't innovate, biodiversity is that even as I speak, there are species being killed and mass extinct, um, extinction is being seen about biodiversity around biodiversity. Um, if we don't innovate, we're losing on it. 
The Agriculture Ministry launched the International Biological Diversity Day, which will be commemorated with a week of activities, debates and symposium on the way forward. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. Turning overseas, U.S. President Donald Trump has revealed he is taking hydroxychloroquine to ward off coronavirus. He has championed the treatment before, even though some experts say it's unproven and dangerous. And Whitney is up next with all the business updates. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight. Post-COVID-19 trade talks begin. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The Fiji Ford Series roundtable discussion about promoting economic recovery is aimed at improving trade mission with the United States and other countries. The trade minister says the COVID-19 crisis has affected the way we normally do trade and this will need to be revised. U.S. Ambassador to Fiji says certain states in the U.S. have expressed interest in exploring trade opportunity in Fiji. Koroi Tandulala reports. Rules of business are bound to change and the trade minister says discussion is ongoing with some states in the U.S. on how best to move forward. For us, you know, the, the rules may change in terms of how we're doing business overseas. The rules of trade may change, what opportunities are, are going to be availed of us and uh, the diversification that's required for us to take us back to where we want to. We yeah, the state of Texas represented. Uh, who have uh, spotted opportunities here as well. We're in conversations with other states in the United States who are keen on coming here and doing bilateral trade missions. Uh, this is a unique time to really lead and uh, have a robust dialogue as to where we are at in the economy. Koya says Fiji's national carrier will also be part of the trade discussion to ensure consistent exchange between the two countries. It's a three-way discussion. Fiji Airways also yeah. will be a part of it. It's growing, it, you know, it fell flat, but fortunately for us, we, we some of the guys that were exporting out, it, it continued because Fiji was just flying cargo, fl cargo flights. But because it opens up, it's actually good for Fiji. The trade minister says more open discussions will take place soon with bilateral partners to identify ways of improving trade between Fiji and other nations and help get our economy back on track. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. A number of auto plants have begun restarting assembly lines in North America. Walkers for Ford, General Motors and Fiat Chrysler are returning to factories across the United States. We now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money markets. The U.S. dollar edged near a five-week high against the yen, although its rise was kept by renewed skepticism of coronavirus vaccine developments. Japan's core machinery orders slipped in March, suggesting a widening heat to the economy despite a large number of orders for big ticket items. Meanwhile, the euro held firm today, relaxing in the afterglow of a Franco-German proposal for common fund that could move Europe closer to fiscal union. The trade and political tension between the US and China, as well as Australia and China, seems to weigh on the market's risk-taking, the hope of coronavirus cure could turn things around. Australian retail sales slumped in April. Their Bureau of Statistics reported the biggest retail sales plunge ever, a seasonally adjusted minus 17.9% in April, down from an 8.5% jump in March. The figures showed heavy falls in every industry with turnover in clothing, cafes and restaurants near half the level of April 2019. Australia is facing its biggest fall in economic activity and its first recession in 30 years. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Turning to today's exchange rates as set this morning, the Fiji dollar continued to rise against the U.S. greenback as well as gaining on the Kina, the Euro and the Japanese Yen. It slipped somewhat against the Chinese won as well as the Kiwi and Aussie dollars. Onto the commodities market, crude oil dropped slightly to close at $32 per barrel. Gold was on the rise at $1,754 an ounce, while silver was up at 1806 per ounce. That's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thanks, Whitney, and good evening in sports tonight. Ron Bowlers head back to the greens.
and VG Swimming will plan new dates for Oceania Meet. This and more after the break. Bula, I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. It's back to some form of normalcy for bowlers as they slowly return to the greens after two months. The athletes who have had to practice shadow bowling from their respective homes since the March COVID-19 lockdown are eager to hit the ground rolling. Tali Materukulo with a story. Heading back to the greens and practicing roles is first on the agenda for the bowlers. Bowlers right now, they actually uh, quite happy, you know, to back on the green. Um, it's sort of uh, weird because we haven't sort of seen each other for since the lockdown. Local bowling sensation Nitya Tikoisuva says national bowlers can now sharpen up on their stance and delivery. I think the team uh, that has uh, have been selected are actually very happy that they can go down and do their normal training, you know, just to prepare themselves in case something comes up. Suva Bowling Club manager Maureen Lavaki says... While they are excited to have bowlers back on the greens, precautionary measures must also be observed. We're wanting to stick to the two players per rink, and um, so therefore we can have up to about 16 players at a time. Um, but we also need to take into consideration that we also have a restaurant here, so we'll have to probably minimize that as well. Lavaki has also given clarification that even though greens will be open, the bar will remain closed. Tournaments and competitions are still restricted. Talima Terkula, FBC Sports. The Fiji Swimming Association will be looking at a new date to host its 2020 Oceania Swimming Championships. The tournament was scheduled to be held in Fiji from June 15th to the 21st, but has been deferred in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Karlaini Tabi with the details. Association President Ben Rover says they still have their hopes up that eventually the Oceania event We'll proceed. We have to really look at that huh? because at the moment it's um, it's being sort of withdrawn, but um, we're waiting for how things go, funding from government and all that before we will have to reapproach the Oceania Swimming Association and let them know that you know what's a suitable date for us to host that program again. As things stand, the Fiji National Sports Commission does not have the money to organize the competition. Commission Chair Peter Mazi says if Fiji Swimming decides to host the competition, it should be in the next financial year. The funding's been returned to the Ministry of Economy. Um, if they are rehosting, it will be in a new financial year, so it will be next year because our year starts on the 1st of August. Um, so, or maybe even if we're going to have a later, it may be the 1st of September. Once everything returns to its normal, the Fiji Swimming Association will work with the Lotoka City Council to get their swimmers back in training at their newly built aquatic center to prepare for the Oceania and Olympic Games. Carlin Itavi, FBC Sports. Sevens legend Sir Gordon Tidgens is stepping down from the position of Samoa Sevens head coach. Central Coast Stadium in Sydney will be the Warriors' new home for the rest of the NRL season. The confirmation of team venues comes as rugby league officials also agreed to a new TV deal. That's a Wednesday night sports coming up in Weird and Wonderful. Take a look at how one woman is not letting lockdown ruin her fitness routine. Find out more after the break. Bula, I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Angie is back tonight and she has the latest in weather. Hello to you and welcome to the weather world. What an exciting day to be out and about or even if you are just relaxing at home, the weather was just right and the kind you and I love. And yes, we made it to midweek where the weekend seems quite near. Hooray to that! 
Let's quickly check out the other centers. To the west, cloudy periods instead of sunshine. The temperatures were not otherwise. It switched between 35 to 36 degrees. Eastwards from Pak Haba to Suva, there was wall-to-wall -wall sunshine and that same sunshine dimmed down a little and now there is cloudy spell. And up north, sunshine was filled with goodness. Light showers might interrupt later tonight. At sea, southeast winds remain at 15 to 20 knots, moderate seas. Turning to the tides, low tide at 11.21 p.m. with high tide at 5.35 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.26. For tomorrow, generally a largely settled picture is set to continue with periods of rain and showers broken by some brighter spells while staying cool on the cooler side. Tomorrow's stamps, there is nothing to worry about. All is good and your plans can still continue given that the weather and the temperatures are on your side at settled temperatures. And looking further on to Friday, wow, already final weather is in our very spectacular day. That's all the good news I have for you on weather. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask, what is your take on seafood prices during the current COVID-19 crisis? They said it costs $15 a bundle of fish, and for us living in the village, we want to eat fish, but we can't afford to pay that much. With COVID-19 around, the cost of fish has increased and it's not worth the amount of fish being sold to people. The cost of fish is expensive and the amount of fish being sold is not worth the money we pay. Before COVID-19, it was cheaper to buy fish. I think we should uh, decrease it because uh, people are struggling right like now. And uh, most of people are un unemployed and they looking for ways for them to feed their families. I mean, uh, for us, it's a bit reasonable because there's a place where we just buy fresh fish because we are getting it at $7 a kilo. Uh, seafood, uh, seafood price is very high, so they should uh, negotiate the price to go down. No? In the world of the weird and the wonderful, people have been getting up to all sorts of training techniques during the pandemic restrictions. One woman has come up with something really different. Recapping the main stories for tonight, alleged $400,000 scam lands eight in court. COVID-19 fight goes up a notch and demand for rental properties on a decline. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, do you agree with LTA's compulsory online registration of driving license holders? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, keeping cool in the heat of Fiji summer, and this was taken by James Lingo, absolutely adorable. And you can send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us on our FBC News Facebook page and Twitter at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, stay safe. Bye for now. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.